Things you didn't know about Twilight Zone. Frank, can you do a good Twilight Zone imitation? Theme song? As far as like the thing, um, I, 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 for some reason I have the X Files theme in my head right now. I don't know why. There you go. <laughs> no, 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 so Twilight Zone debuted October 2nd, 1959. There's been multiple different runs of the show. You had the initial run from 59 to 64. And then there was another one from 1985 to 1989, then 2002 to 2003, and then 2019 to 2020. Now, if you like the Twilight that Zone guy his wife. and the stream here, obviously make sure you guys are clicking that thumbs up down below. It's much appreciated. Now, one of my favorite times, I worked in radio broadcasting for over 20 years, multiple different kinds of formats, multiple uh, different jobs. But when I was living in Portland, this is about 10 years ago, I was working for FM News 101 in Portland. And I would run the board during the overnight shift. And there was a block of, of programming overnight that was dedicated to Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. Because they had that run. Uh, the episodes were actually from 2002 to 2012 with Stacy Keach narrating. All right. And th I would always look forward to that time of the night when he was there, man, because, oh, I I love the Twilight Zone. It's fantastic. So everybody has, like, their favorite Twilight Zone episode. What was yours? Well, there's one. <sighs> you can only have one. I can only have one? I can't yeah, remember the name of it. Says they always have one. Okay. I can't remember the name of the episode. Um, but it's the one where the a woman wakes up in the hospital and she's got all these bandages over her face. Yeah. And all the doctors are talking. They're talking about just how horrific she looks and how right. she's and just she's been gorgeous. mangled and everything. And then they finally unveil her face and she looks beautiful underneath. But then when it shows mm -hmm. them, they're all these like, like gnarly Dude. looking pig people. Yep. Fantastic episode. But the one Mine that I was... liked the most, the audio version with Stacy oh, Keach was the one where the mannequins from the shopping center would come to life and go out into the real world. <laughs> They'd get their week or whatever yeah. it was. Oh, yeah. I love that one, man. Wasn't that like what the movie mannequin was kind of based on? I don't I don't know. From the eighties, where the where Kim Cattrell comes alive and starts having sex with everybody. I was gonna say, yeah, but the, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the mannequins in uh, Twilight Zone weren't having sex with everybody. <laughs> That one's in the spank bank. All right. William Shatner. You guys remember the one that he was in, right? Terror at 20,000 yeah. feet. That's such a classic one. The Simpsons did it better. They did. They totally did. <laughs> so, and, and remember, so here was the thing. So the, he, he originally did this. And then John Lithgow ended it up doing the, it in the, the movie, movie right? as well. Yeah. They then spoofed it on Third Rock from the Sun. Because remember, mm -hmm. John Lithgow, their boss... In Third Rock William from the Sun Shatner. was William Shatner. And so they're in the airport and they're drunk. And then and they're doing the whole, there's something on the way. And so they're both <laughs> spoofing, uh, spoofing them. Uh, Vero says the aliens menu. That's a good one. Uh, Simpsons spoofed that one brilliantly as well. I always like the one where the it's the cabin in the woods and the, uh, the woman is... Like a UFO lands close, and her and the police officer, or sheriff, or whatever, are stuck in the house. And like the aliens running around their house up on the top of the house, you don't see what it is. And then they go out during the day. And it's like this giant, like almost cyclops creature that mm -hmm. that was out and running around. But it was just the whole, like you didn't see it, and you just hear all the noises around the roof and the windows breaking. And it was just like it kind of freaked me out as a kid watching that one. We we're learning more and more about what freaked Frank out. I didn't when like he was a, a kid. I didn't like a lot of. A lot of freaky stuff. Man. Everything well, was scary. William Shatner and Ed Burns actually played a prank on Richard Donner, who directed this episode. Yeah. They faked a fight on the wing, and they threw a Shatner-sized dummy off the wing to the concrete below to make it look like they had thrown William Shatner actually off of the wing. Good Lord. Now, quick side note here. Have you guys seen Shatner is actually in the news? Yeah, because someone said he was dead. No, there's like a, oh. it was a huge, like big financial debacle, I guess, going on. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he's probably gotten himself into more situations. He lost like, I guess, a boatload of money because he invested in women's underwear. And apparently women were not keen on buying Shatner panties. I didn't want Shatner wear. Go where, never, go where they've never gone before. 
stop shitting in my panties. Shatner panties. There you go. There's your uh, dad joke for the day. Now, At there first was one. When you were talk- Hold on. At first, when you were talking about what they were going to joke by throwing a Shatner sized duplicate or whatever, I thought you were going to say a Shatner sized shit. <laughs> oh, jeez. Shatner barely knew her. So there, so there was one word that was off limits to the writers other than Rod Serling. God. Actually, oh. hold on. Let me see here. Get this. Get your echo. God. 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 Ooh. Um, and one writer, Richard Matheson, uh, he got upset about it. He didn't like it, although he never actually asked why, and they were never told the reason behind this rule of why you couldn't include God, only Rod could. In Rod we trust, I guess. Rod and Todd. Now, do you guys know who originally was going to be the narrator for Twilight Zone? Uh, James Earl Jones. Huh. Orson Welles. That sounds about right. He was originally going to be the narrator. Uh, Rod Serling, he thought that the style was too pompous and distracting. And then eventually CBS realized they couldn't afford it. So they, so they didn't go. <laughs> so they, and so Rod then kind of threw his name out there to be like, hey, I'll do it. Which was unheard of at the time because showrunners were always in the background. Like they weren't like front and center right there. And finally, did you know that one... Uh, story from the Twilight Zone was actually an Oscar winning film. In season five, they were over budget. So Serling bought the rights to the French short film An Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. And that's I mean, that was it. They just literally he bought the rights and that was the episode. There was no there was like nothing done with it. They just took the short film and it had won oh, yeah. an Oscar. And how uh, that episode would eventually kind of become the missing episode because it was never sold into syndication. So Mm -hmm. if you were trying to watch it, you never got to see it. However, it eventually would pop up in like DVD and Blu-ray releases for season five. 